Joined here by the former Speaker of the Colorado House, Chrisanta Duran, who's announcing a primary challenge against Democratic Congressman Diana DeGette of Denver. Welcome back. Happy to be here. Let's talk about your why. Mm -hmm. Why should Denver Democrats replace a congresswoman with decades of seniority with somebody who would come in as a, as a freshman legislator? Well, I have a lot of experience, Kyle. I've served as a Speaker of the House and served in the Colorado le Legislature for the last eight years. And for me, when I look at this moment in time when Donald Trump is in the White House and we have seen the elevation of hate and fear, when there are people who feel like they are under attack because of who they are, their values are under attack, we need to evaluate whether or not we have the best leaders in office. And I have decided to run to be the next congresswoman from Congressional District 1 um, because I think it's time for a new generation of leadership. And I thank Congresswoman DeGette for her many years of service. Uh, Congressional District 1 has changed in many ways since she was first elected tw over 20 years ago. And for the future, it is important that we have a new and different style of leadership to lead our country forward. And I look forward to getting out to every community in Congressional District 1 and hope to earn people's vote. Would you be running against her if you thought she was an effective member of Congress? I think that in these times for the future, we always need to be thinking about how, do we have the right leaders in the right place at the right time. And for me, leadership is a lot about priorities. And my priorities over, during the time that I've been in office have really focused on making sure that we don't take anybody for granted and we don't leave anybody behind. And that is why I focus on income inequality by uh, pulling together workforce development initiatives so that as Colorado economy continues to change, that people have the skills to be able to gain access to good paying jobs, um, priorities like fighting for civil rights, priorities like advocating for comprehensive immigration reform before it was even popular to do so. In fact, at a time um, when uh, there were many people on both sides of the aisle who did not want to talk about immigration. Um, it's been many of those issues and including climate action. Um, I've been a champion of really working to advance our renewable energy standard in Colorado, advancing electric cars and alternative forms of energy. And that's also why I support the Green New Deal. I think for the next generation and thinking about the quality of life that we have had in Colorado, it is so important that we have champions that will lead on all of these issues and, and many more. I'm not sure that I heard an answer, so I'm going to ask again. Do you believe that Congresswoman DeGette is an effective member of Congress? Well, I think that she... Um, should be recognized for the work that she has done, and I thank her for her service. But in these times, it is time for something different and something new. And for me, leadership is about approach, and it's leadership is about priorities. And that is very different um, for, for the future, and I look forward to making my case to the people of Congressional District 1. You've said that a couple times, thank her for her service. That's yes. what Marie Kondo says we should say to our old sweatshirts before we throw them in the trash. It, is, are you concerned that people are going to hear that and say you can't just shoo somebody off the stage because you want it to be your turn? You have to have real differences with them? Well, nobody owns a seat in Congress, and nobody should own a seat in Congress. In fact, the people the makeup congressional district one is who gets to decide who goes to Congress. And I think competition is good, especially in these times where the status quo enabled somebody like Donald Trump to become our president of the United States, where we have seen day after day attacks on people and Coloradans, the latest shutdown, seeing so many Colorado companies impacted, Colorado workers impacted, that live right in congressional district one. And we have to think about why did he rise to that position in the first place? And are we doing everything we possibly can to be the best that we can be and make sure that we have the right leaders in office. When you talk about a new generation, is that code for she's too old? Absolutely not. What my focus is and what my focus has been since I've been in the legislature is working to lift up all voices, regardless of race, gender, income, who you love, regardless of age, to be able to bring people together and really find common ground, but also having the courage 
to take on the tough issues. And in these times, we need to do more than have allies or have people who take action because of political convenience. We need political courage every single day to be able to make sure the voices and values of every person, every community in Congressional District 1 is brought forward to Washington, D.C. I've worked, done that in the past, and I, I hope to do that in the future. Can you name one specific instance where you feel the Congresswoman has lacked political courage? Well, to me, this is all about the future. And I am running for the future um, to be able to bring people together. It is a different approach. It is a, a new, a fresh set of eyes looking at some ongoing problems. But one thing I will say to you uh, um, is that for, throughout the time I have served in office, I have taken on some of the most challenging and tough issues. Even when it was tough to do so, even when I didn't know whether or not I was going to have the support of Democratic colleagues, of whether I was going to get the support of bipartisanship to be able to get things done, but you take on the tough issues because people need and want to see leadership, especially in these, these difficult times. Your campaign is being framed as a challenge to Congresswoman to get from the progressive left. And it's neither here nor there, but I've covered politics in, in Denver for 10 years. I never would have guessed that you're more progressive than she is. You're both kind of middle of the road Democrats. Are you more progressive than she is? <laughs> it's so funny because when I go into conservative circles, people think I am uh, more progressive. And sometimes when I go to progressive circles, people think that I'm more moderate. And I'll tell you, at the end of the day, the thing that drives me is getting things done. And we have got things done over and over again at the State House, whether it was transportation, funding, protecting people's civil rights, advancing affordable housing and affordable child care. And so I know that sometimes people like to say the left or the right. For me, it's about problem solving. What's the language being used by your own <laughs> campaign? So, so I'm curious, why are you guys framing it that way if you don't have a record that backs it up? Oh, I am progressive, and my record is absolutely progressive. And if you ask me what I think a progressive is, let me tell you. Well, I think Actually, I, because I'm guessing the Congresswoman DeGette would also say she's progressive. So I'm curious, where do you disagree with her on an issue that matters to progressives? Uh, the Green New Deal is one in particular where I'm in support of that. Um, I think that there's also been um, many issues that we have to be willing to come out and speak about and really work to organize and mobilize people to be able to make change. And I am, what I have said, and I've said time and uh, over again, is that she needs to be recognized for the work that she has done. But I think that these times, in these times, where immigrants and refugees are being attacked, where Coloradans health care is under attack, where there was a tax bill that was passed that is going to help the wealthy and the largest corporations, while middle income folks continue to get left behind. And there are too many people who feel like they are a hamster in a wheel in this state and in this district, working and working and working and never actually get ahead. In these times, we have to do something new and different and, and, and a new approach and a new leadership can be very helpful to leading the district and the, the country forward. And at the end of the day, I believe in democracy, and it is up to the people of Congressional District 1 to make a decision. But being a progressive means that I work to not take anybody for granted and not leave anybody behind. And that is what I have focused on uh, the time that I've been in office, prior to the time I was in office, um, and that is what I'm going to continue to do in the future. A couple more quick questions. Your campaign website is down today. I looked at a cached version, which I hope is fairly recent, and it didn't outline any policy differences with the incumbent. I understand the Green New Deal. She hasn't taken a formal position on it yet. You're an enthusiastic supporter. Other than that, do you have other serious policy disagreements? Well, as I mentioned, it goes back to taking on some of the tough issues. This is not a time. Those aren't policy differences. Those would be leadership differences. I'm asking you, do you have policy differences well, with her? Well, this is not a time to be safe. This is a time to be bold. And when it comes to climate action, when it comes to income inequality, um, civil rights, I mean, so many issues that I have worked to be a champion on, those are my priorities. And, and, and when voters make a decision, um, absolutely. Do policies matter? Yes. Approach matters as well. And, and so do priorities. Because when you are in elected office, really what matters of who sets the agenda, it's all based on priorities. Let me ask you a question then about, about priorities and about leadership. Your campaign website claims credit for reforming the culture at the state capitol and mentions the expulsion of former Representative Steve Lubsock for sexual harassment. 
You promoted Lebsack after learning of his alleged sexual harassment. You put him directly in a position of authority over his alleged victim. Was that a mistake? I followed the wishes of Representative Faith Winter. And it is very difficult when one has experienced sexual harassment or abuse as to how they want that handled. I followed her wishes and I thought that the issue had been resolved. And she was fine with you placing him in a position of authority over her legislation? Well, at the time um, when everything took place, I thought that the issue had been resolved. You know, and if I would have known back then when I made the decision for him to be chair, everything that I know today, there is no way that I would have put him into that position. But what we learn through this process is, is that the Capitol needed systemic change. You know, we hired a third party um, expert to come in, do a survey, and through that survey they found that there were many people who had seen or experienced um, sexual harassment and never came forward and asked for help. And so if I would have known everything that I knew um, throughout the process when I decided to make that decision, there is no way that I would have put him into that position. But I didn't know. And that's why we, me and Representative Faith Winter, we worked together on the interim committee to come up with recommendations to change the system at the Capitol and also to reform the culture head on, which is, which is absolutely key. Last question. 2020 is going to be a big year for Democrats and for Colorado Democrats in particular. They're going to be focused on beating President Trump, focused on trying to unseat Senator Cory Gardner. Do you have any concerns that an expensive and uh, contested primary, where there might not need to be one, yeah. is a distraction or a drain of resources from Democrats in which they want to do other things in 2020? I think it makes the party better. And I think competition will be helpful to be able to make sure that we have the best leader um, in office in Congressional District 1 to be able to move it forward. And our party um, and the people that make up our party, it's very important that we are hearing and listening the values and voices of all communities and that those voices and values are made a priority to be able to lead our state forward. Former Speaker Duran, thank you for coming in. Hope to speak to, to with you again. Thank you so much. Happy to come back anytime. Thank you. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel for the best of next and some other stuff.